Should you become an electronics engineer in 2022? The purpose of this video is to help you figure out whether this particular occupation is for you. We're going to talk about demand. We're going to talk about money. We're going to talk about personalities of electronics engineers and more. We're also going to talk about an occupation that tends to be stealing a lot of engineers away. Electronics engineers research, design, develop, and test electronic components. They do this in a lot of different industries. Electronics engineers can work in the sciences, they can work for the military, they can work in an industrial setting or a commercial setting. Electronics engineers design electronic circuits and components for use in fields such as telecommunications, aerospace, guidance and propulsion systems, acoustics, and instruments. Depending on what company you might be involved in, you might be involved in the full life cycle from design to deployment of certain electronics. The beginning stages would be determining project material or equipment needs and preparing engineering sketches and eventually designing these electronics, having a way of testing them and then potentially selling them depending on the industry. Back in 2014 and 2015, Payscale did a survey of electronics engineers. 67% reported extreme satisfaction or just fairly satisfied with their job. And about 62% of employed electronic engineers would say that their work makes the world a better place. 67% definitely isn't bad for the number of people that are satisfied with this particular occupation. You just really have to make sure that you're interested in this particular occupation. Interest is a huge deal when it comes to careers and occupations. If you're having trouble choosing a particular career, we have the course for you. Choose the right career is an easy to follow seven step process to help you find the right career for you. And we take into account your interests, your personality, your values, how much money you wanna make, where you wanna live, in the country and what your purpose is. And we take all these variables and we help you figure out the perfect career for you. It's extremely hard to choose a career. There's over a thousand occupations to choose from. If you need help choosing a career or occupation, check out the link below. We can also look at the demographics of electronics engineers. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, this is an extremely male dominated occupation and they, they roped in electronics and electrical engineers. There's a lot of overlap between electronics and electrical engineers. They found that 93% identify as male, 10% identify as Hispanic or Latino, 75% describe themselves as white and 19% or one out of five describe themselves as Asian. So this is definitely a pretty male dominated occupation. And this is just like all the other engineering fields, pretty much all the engineering fields are pretty male dominated. Next, we're gonna get into the educational requirements of becoming an electronics engineer. And they're not as challenging as you would think. In fact, according to the Occupational Information Network, quite a few electronics engineers don't have a bachelor's degree. According to the Occupational Information Network, which is a branch of the Department of Labor, 57% of employed electronics engineers have a bachelor's degree, 17% have a high school diploma plus some kind of certificate, and 15% have an associate's degree. So there seems to be people getting into this particular occupation without going through and getting a bachelor's degree. And maybe they're kind of combining electronics engineers and electronic engineering technicians together, and maybe that's one of the reasons why you're seeing a lot of employed electronic engineers not having a bachelor's degree. But one way to really look at this is to actually just look at job postings. Okay, one of my favorite job boards is actually just the Google search engine. Just type in the job that you're interested in and the word jobs and then the location. Press the enter key and Google is going to find a lot of job postings from so many different sources. I mean, look at all these this first job posting, Tarda.ai, Adzuna, like all these little niche job posting platforms, Google just rounds them up and throws them into this platform. So first we're gonna look at electronics engineer, this job posting for the FBI. This is down in Quantico, Virginia. This most likely requires a bachelor's degree and also the ability to obtain a top secret clearance. I'm guessing they're most likely gonna require a bachelor's degree or something. Yeah, if you wanna go work for the FBI, you definitely need a bachelor's degree or higher from a US accredited college or university. Pretty much any government agency, especially on the federal level, is gonna require a bachelor's degree or higher. Next, we're gonna try and find like a small company that maybe has looser requirements. Here we go. Uh, actually, this is kind of interesting, Apple. And this is for a display electro electrical engineer. And there's so much overlap between electronics engineering and electrical engineering. And you're gonna see this when you start looking at job postings. There's just so much overlap. And sure enough, to work at Apple or probably any of the big FANG companies, you need a bachelor's or master's degree in electrical engineering or equivalent. And you definitely notice this language a lot, equivalent. So it's like they're open to other engineering fields. Sure, they're asking for electrical engineering, but if there's some random electronics engineering degree out there, they're probably, I'm guessing they probably accept you. 
Here we go, Emmy, which is probably some small business somewhere in Westfield, Indiana. And sure enough, this also requires a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering or computer science. So I'm not really sure what ONET's talking about. You know, 57% of electronics engineers having just uh, a bachelor's degree, because for the most part, I'm seeing master's degree, bachelor's degree. I actually had a pretty hard time finding different job postings that just required something less than a bachelor's degree. Next, we're gonna get into how much money electronics engineers can expect to make in 2022. In 2021, last year, electronics engineers were reported to have a base salary of $115,490. This makes electronics engineering the sixth highest paid engineering field if you don't include software development. If you do include software development, it is the seventh highest paying field. They're really only beat out by aerospace, chemical, computer hardware, petroleum, and nuclear engineering. In 2016, the average base salary for an electronics engineer was $103,760. By 2021, this rose to $115,490. So the wage growth between 2020 and 2021 was $3,170, or almost a 3% raise nationally for electronics engineers. So this is an average national salary. You know, every industry average together, whether you're in government at the local state level or commercial or military, all the electronics engineers average together. But if you just focus, say, on San Jose, California, you'll see that electronics engineers earn a lot more than this. San Jose, that's where basically where Silicon Valley is. This is the highest paying place for electronics engineers. In San Jose, California in 2021, the average base salary for an electronics engineer was $152,060. When you factor in benefits and you calculate maybe 30% for benefits, total compensation rises to almost $200,000 in a year. So you can definitely make a lot of money as an electronics engineer if you're working in tech and specifically working in Silicon Valley, San Jose, California. Not saying everyone should go work there. It's an extremely expensive place to live, but the wages there are extremely high. Next up, we're going to talk about the demand for electronics engineers. And this is where things, if you look at government data, get a little weird because the government tries to separate computer hardware engineers and electronics engineers and electrical engineers. And there's so much overlap between all three of those different occupations. People use different degrees to get into each of those. And then I'm going to show you in a second that software development kind of steals a lot of these people. But according to the government, the number of employed electronics engineers has actually been falling for years. They report in 2016 that there was about 132,000 employed electronics engineers. According to them, this fell to 107,000 in 2021. And I'm going to show you why in a second that it's, it makes no sense because when you look at job postings, there's a lot of job postings for electronics engineers. So I went on Indeed, Glassdoor, and LinkedIn, and I looked at the number of job postings on these different job platforms. On Glassdoor.com, I found 25,570 job postings for electronics engineers in the United States. Indeed, 51,723. LinkedIn, 36,236. And there's around 107,000 employed. So there is a lot of job postings related to electronics engineering. A lot of these job postings might not be specifically for electronics engineering. Some of it might be for electrical engineers. Some of it might be for computer hardware engineers. And some of it might even be for materials engineers. Um, a lot of these engineering fields, there's just a lot of overlap. So sometimes engineers even have the opportunity to, to kind of hop between these different job titles. So as of right now, there's actually plenty of demand for electronics engineers, as well as electrical and computer hardware engineers. But keep in mind that these engineering fields are pretty tiny. And there is a certain occupation that has been kind of stealing a lot of engineers over the past two decades. And I'm going to show you in a chart in a second that shows you how crazy this is right now. So this is the engineering workforces. This is the number of employed engineers in different engineering fields. You have the big three, civil, industrial, and mechanical engineering, which all have around 300,000 employed. Electronics engineering has 107,000 employed, making it the fifth largest workforce among engineers. But as you can see, there is almost 1.4 million employed software developers. So kind of what you see over and over again is a lot of engineers can end up in software development, but just because the demand is crazy, you don't have to live in very specific places like you do with smaller niche fields. I'm not saying electronics engineering is a small niche field. It's just a workforce of 100,000 versus a workforce of 1.4 million, it's a lot different. There's just so much demand for software development. So if you're trying to live out in Montana somewhere and work remote, uh, software development is a great choice. 
Finally, we get to the personality of electronics engineers. The Myers-Briggs company releases information every couple of years on the Myers-Briggs types of people in different occupations. For electronics engineers, they actually found that the most likely Myers-Briggs type to become a electronics engineer is the INTJ, also known as the mastermind. The second most likely type is the ENTJ, the commander, third, the INTP, and fourth, the ISTJ. No surprise, all four of these personality types have a preference for thinking over feeling, and three of the four have a preference for judging over perceiving. That's like structure over spontaneity. So I hope this video helped you figure out whether electronics engineering is for you. We have a lot of other content on a lot of other careers for you to check out on YouTube. Also, if you're an electronics engineer, let us know what you think down in the comments below. Are you satisfied at your particular job? Do you think your work is making the world a better place in any way? Let us know down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.